behind his own net. Van Lusen tries to feed it out in front. Torres, he pounds his man in the boards. Going down heavily. As we got a fight now, Savage at the blue line with McClement. Van Lusen, Torres, everybody's going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Van Hoof joins in on the competition. And this is Harrison and Galbraith going after it. Talbot was the man who went down. Harrison now going at it, and he lands on top of Galbraith. Linesman having a lot of trouble breaking this one up. And a second fight is broken out now at the 67's blue line. Jay McClement. And it looks like Savage tied up with McClement now. Savage throwing some overhand rights, really just clipping the top of the helmet. And McClement is now coming back. Selva, Savage has lost his lid. Finally, that one's broken up as well. We get some real fireworks to end this uh, second period, still with a couple of ticks under 12 seconds to go. And all of that started with that big hit right there from Rafi Torres on Joe Talbot. You know that wasn't going unnoticed by any of the 67 forwards. There is Rafi Torres. If you see the guy that's stronger on his skates than Rafi, for a guy that's not very big, and I mean big by NHL standards of 6'2 and up, he is not very big, but man, is he steady on his skates. And well, I mean, that's one of those aspects that Rafi Torres has as one of these elite players in the Ontario Hockey League, that physical portion of his game. And uh, Rafi Torres just laying a big hit in there and doesn't go unnoticed, like you said, but as we take a look at the players of the month, of course, the Branson Battalion. Hey, same guy, two awards. Brad Topping, of course, winning the Rookie of the Month and the Goaltender of the Month. This past month in January, Brampton Battalion and the Ontario Hockey League. And McAllister from the Owen Sound Attack picks up the Player of the Month honors here in the OHL. Just over 11 seconds, almost 12 seconds remaining here in the second period as we sort out whose equipment is whose and sort out who's getting the major penalties and if anybody are getting 10-minute penalties in this hockey game as well. It'll be interesting to see the way this sorts out. Sorry, Dougie. It was because, I mean, really, it was Rafi Torres and Sebastian Savage that were the first two guys to get tangled up. Jay McClement came in as kind of the third man into that bracket with Torres and Savage. No punches were thrown in that fight until, I mean, until the fight between Galbraith and Harrison had concluded after it kind of stopped and started a few times there. Yeah. Harrison's heading off into the dressing room. And so they're going to sort out all the equipment and everything that goes. You know, we were just talking about um, what it means to these kids to have a big second half of the season. And we just got through the top prospects game. And that was a big deal for these young hockey players as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, <clears throat> that's the that's definitely the game where these guys get to strut their stuff. It's kind of the benchmark that the NHL scouts look at as to, you know, who are the top prospects going to be towards the end of the game. It also can make or break you, unfortunately. It's only yeah. one game, but definitely one of the biggest games of the year uh, for these CHL prospects, despite the fact that really it's not your regular game play. Oh, it doesn't really affect the top five draft picks or so in the, in the NHL entry draft. Where it does affect is the guys from, say, number 20, Five to number five, and they can move, up, move up and down very severely. So a lot of pressure on those young kids in the CHO top prospects game that was in Calgary. Yeah, and even when you go through all those rankings, you know, sometimes they don't really mean a lot because on draft day, you know, it really depends what the team needs. A lot of times, some teams, a lot of teams obviously do just draft the best player available where they are, but certain teams obviously go into the draft looking to address certain needs, and sometimes those ratings when you get into 25, 26, 27, move, they don't quite mean as much. But if you move from a top, a top 10 draft choice to a top 30 draft choice, you also just lost X amount of six-figure dollars <laughs> as far as signing bonuses and things like that. Oh, definitely. There's Coach Dan Butler, and uh, very well respected, not only in the hockey community, but very well respected by his own players, and how important is that? We all know about Brian Kilroy. He's, been a, he's a legend in junior hockey. 
and Brian Kilray has really led his team year after year to a top run. But Stan Butler, after running the World Junior program this year, really has uh, more of the respect around the league and more respect of his players, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. I think you see Stan Butler is, you know, coming along as maybe the next one. And uh, who knows? I mean, who knows if Stan Butler someday will move on to the NHL or not. But definitely with the way that he's developed this Brampton program, uh, you definitely have to think that he's one of the coaches in this league that could someday, in the short term, really even move on to the NHL. Far right of your screen there is Brian Killer Kilray. 67s move into Mississauga after this. So as we see there, McClement and Savage will both be assessed uh, game misconduct as a part of their fight as they're the second fight on that stoppage. And uh, Savage also comes out of there with the extra deuce. So the Branson Battalion will be on the power play for just uh, two minute, but it doesn't look like Sam Butler's too happy with the way things played out. Well, he just lost his number one center. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be too happy either when I, when I lose your number one center in a hockey game. And really, it's like you said, how is the referee going to see this? Is he going to see fight A and fight B starting at the same time and just giving them fighting penalties? Or is he going to see fight A and after that's finished, fight B then starting? And if that was the case, and that's obviously how he saw it, by giving the game misconduct to 